What is up subscribers and non-subscribers? And hey, if you're a non-subscriber, consider subscribing because uh, we do some pretty cool stuff on this channel. LS turbo cars and other kind of restorations like my 71 GTO convertible, mini trucks and fast Mustangs and fast muscle cars with twin turbos and all kinds of stuff. So make sure you check out the other videos. Like I said, subscribe if you like what you see because there's going to hopefully be a lot more to see. So anyways, today I'm working on my S10. For those who don't know, it's an 87 S10, has air ride suspension. I'm putting a 5.3 L33 LS engine in it with a VS Racing 7875 turbo and a bunch of other stuff and I'm building it. Today we're gonna be working on some of the hot side piping and also finishing up the inner fenders here where I cut them, I have to add some metal in. You also see here, I cut the hole a lot bigger than I needed to, so I'm gonna weld that up today. And then uh, the people who have been here before know that uh, when I did my hot side, I welded one of the pipes on a little weird, and I, I got a lot of comments about it, uh, that I should fix it. And so I'm gonna do that today, and you guys will see what I do to fix it. And hopefully everyone's happy after that. I think it should actually look better and work better, so uh, let's get to it. First thing I'm going to do today is fix this up. Uh, I trimmed it a bit and uh, I trimmed it more than I needed to so I made up this little piece. I'm just going to weld it in here. It's not a huge deal. It's just going to make it look nicer. I'll be happier with it uh, which is all that matters. So yeah so I'm going to do that and then uh, we'll move on to the uh, rad support which also needs a little bit of repair and I'll show you what I'm going to do over there. Alright so I got this done here. Just welded a little piece on there. I also welded up a couple holes here. I used to have the uh, washer fluid bottle there, but it's not going to fit there anymore now because of the cold side piping. Uh, and then over on this one, I just did this. I made a piece here. I made a little piece here. So it's basically round, but yeah, so that'll work. So, uh, yeah, so now I'm gonna start taking this all apart. I'm gonna take the rad support out, uh, take the other fender off, and then I'll start taking the exhaust and turbo and everything off to get that hot side piping off. No, it's not that exciting. I thought I'd film a little bit of this. you what I came up with. Here is the tube in question. Obviously if you haven't been on here before you wouldn't know about it. Clayton said that I should have went more of an angle which I agree with because originally when I started to do it it was supposed to be on more of an angle and actually when I cut this tube here my plan was to have this straight piece go more this way. I don't know. I can't explain why it ended up this way but it did. So I honestly don't think it would really make that big of a difference. I mean, the exhaust is gonna flow through here. When it gets here, it's gonna turn up there. But what it ended up doing is I took a 90 degree piece, or more or less a bend, exhaust bend, and I cut this piece out of here. And as you can see, that fits in there, which will then make the exhaust flow nicer and up and open it up. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna mark this here all the way around, I'm gonna cut it out, fit this piece in here, weld it on, and then it'll be good. I, I really didn't wanna have to cut this off because then I'd have a big hole here I'd have to weld up or remake all of this, which I didn't really wanna do. So now I'm gonna take the turbo and everything off and then I'll mark it and then I'll start cutting it and fitting this piece in. All right, so now that I have the turbo and everything off, now you can see what I'm going for here. So, I mean, that's going to make, that's, you know, turning it to flow this way. So, I got that piece on, and now I marked it. 
the marker. So now I'm going to cut that out carefully somehow and then fit this piece in and then weld it in. All right, so now you can see I've cut a big hole in there. And then here is what was there. And then this is what's going to go in its place. Definitely should be a better flow. So I'm going to have to probably fit it and then sort of weld a little bit of it and then, you know, work it into place and then continue welding it until it's all the way welded. So that's what I'm going to keep doing. I fit that piece in there and then I welded it in and I had a little bit of trouble fitting it. So it didn't turn out as good as I would have liked, but whatever, it's welded. I'm no professional welder, so here's where we are. So I definitely think that's going to flow better. Everybody's concerns should be uh, not a concern anymore that that's not going to go in there nice. I really wanted it to be something like this when I did it. Uh, so I don't, I'm not upset that I redid it. Uh, that's the nice thing about metal and you can always redo it, you know. I'm in no rush so uh, I'm glad I did it so now that's done and uh, I think my next thing to do is to figure out where to put the narrow band O2 sensors and then drill holes and weld the bungs in. I already have the bungs for them and then uh, I still need to figure out where to put the wide band O2 sensor in my exhaust pipe. I don't know if I'm going to do any more tonight. I might uh, continue this tomorrow and uh, we'll see what happens. All right, so it is the next day or the day after. I don't know. Anyways, so uh, today my plan is to, uh, I got to finish up a little bit here. Uh, now with the turbo off, you can see how I made all this inner fender stuff. After I put it all together, it was a little close to the turbo flange. I know it's probably even still a little close. I'm gonna use a hammer and dolly to work this metal a little bit to move it a, a little bit back. Uh, and then that should be good. Today I'm gonna put the wide band, sorry, narrow band O2 sensors in. So I think I'm gonna put the one here and it'll just point up here and then I can run the wires this way. And then on this side, same thing basically. Put it here, run the wires up that way so they'll be out of the way. That's what I'm gonna do and I think the guys are coming over in a little while so uh, Let's get to it. I got the manifold off and I got the uh, hot side piping off. It's right there. The uh, O2 sensor for the passenger side I'm putting here. So I just drilled it out with um, a drill bit, step bit. And then I had to open it up with the die grinder a little bit until it fits in there nice. And then I'm going to weld that in there. And another thing that I'm doing on these is I ground these bumps off just to make it look a little cleaner, a little nicer. Plus I ground all like the words off and stuff. I'll show you on the stock one. I mean this is what the stock manifold started out as. And you can see there's these bumps that hold those heat shields on. They're not really necessary that you have to take them off, but I just think it'll look better. But the weird thing is, is this one here has this extra bump. And if you look inside, there's actually a bump inside. Which is odd because on the driver side, or what would have been the passenger side, it's on the very back. Which makes no sense why that one's on the very back, but then on this manifold, it's second from the front. So, I ended up cutting it right off. Now there's a hole. So uh, I have to make a little piece in there, and then I'll just TIG weld that into while I'm at it. I was going to leave this one, or just cut part of it off and leave that bump. But then I did and it looked funny, so I decided to just cut it off and weld it. On that side, uh, it's behind the steering box, uh, steering column, so you can't even see it, so I'm not even gonna worry about that one. Uh, so yeah, now I'm gonna make a little piece to fit in here, and then I'm gonna TIG weld the, the bung in, and I'll TIG weld that hole up. I got that all welded up, and uh, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so here's a comparison. Obviously the top one is the new one and the bottom one's the old one. So here you can see, well, hopefully you can't see, but I welded that hole up, turned out really good. 
I welded the O2 sensor on right there. So that one's all good. And so now I just have to, I have to weld the O2 sensor on that tube. And then move on to something else. I got the hot side O2 sensor bung welded in now. So you can see it right there. So that's all welded in. So that's all good. Um, there's been some questions and comments about the wastegate, about how it is only connected to the one, one tube on, from, the, uh, from the driver's side. Uh, so I figured I'd address that right now since I have it out here. Um, on the shit horse, we have it the exact same way. Uh, Clayton's car, which was built by, uh, this hot side and stuff, was built by Quillen Motorsports in the States. His is exactly the same way, just coming out of the one side. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that uh, this is going to be fine. Basically, it's going to go path of least resistance, right? So if the wastegate opens here, and it's letting the exhaust out, this exhaust is going to take the easiest way out, which is going to be to go this way, right? Because this exhaust will start going out, then this will come out here. It's not going to go up to the turbo. It's like cutting a hole in your muffler. You know, the, the exhaust goes out that hole before it gets to the tailpipes. So I'm not really too concerned. And you know what? Like I said before, I don't really have room. I could somehow put it up on here maybe, but it's so tight where I have it now that I don't think it would work. And if, uh, if I have problems with it once I get it together, then I guess I'll have to fix it then. But for now, I'm going to leave it as is and uh, just hope it's okay. And like I said, on the other cars, it's good. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be good. So uh, yeah, now that's done. And uh, I don't know what I'm going to do next. I guess I'm going to fix up this, uh, this area a little bit where I said I want to hammer and dolly this a bit. Plus, I was hitting with a hammer and I cracked the welds right there. So I'm going to have to weld that back up. So I'm going to do that uh, now. Side back on. And uh, I did a little bit of reworking around my inner fender here. It was kind of close. I wanted to give clearance around here and here. So that's all good. There's the O2 sensor. So the wire will run right up in here and be hidden. And then here's the other one. Same thing, it'll run up there and be hidden. So that's good. Mike and Clayton are here. I don't know where Mike went, but uh, there's Clayton. What do you got to say for yourself today? Not much. No? Not much. So we're going to, uh, we're going to knock the cam bearings out of the Shit Horse 5.3. We got a fancy, uh, schmancy kind of cam bearing removal tool. And install. And install tool. So yeah, we're going to knock those out and then uh, we're going to order some new ones and rings and bearings right away so that we can get the short block back together. Like a fresh race motor. All right, Clayton, what are you doing? Uh, I'm just uh, taking out some used up LS cam bearings. But aren't you supposed to just not look at them and leave them? No, not what they say. really bad. Okay, have a look. This is just coming from a Ford guy. Coming? Yeah, I don't know. Hit it. Yeah. It's coming. There you go. See, most guys don't probably never saw this before because they don't change them. Well, sometimes it's good to change your cam bearings. Here, let's see. Look oh, at look. Those fucking bearings. It's mint. Disgusting. Them. Uh, that's a little bit of copper on there. Look I think you, the, I think you just did that with the that. The copper's tool. not bad, but look at all the carbon. You could clean that off. Just steel wool them, put them back in. This is a filthy motor. You're a filthy motor builder. I'm not building it. You're doing. What do you mean? What do you think you're doing right now? I'm taking it apart. I oh, this part of building. You're a it's disassembler not. only. It's just disassembling. And what are we doing? We're gonna order some. Uh, Rings, bearings, and cam bearings, yeah. pistons, rods. No, don't well, be, don't be silly. I thought we were going all aluminum. <laughs> well, this is all aluminum. Coming? Yeah. There it goes. Everybody's saying I don't do much in the videos. This is the <laughs> kind of shit that happens behind the scenes. <laughs> That not everybody sees. Every dog has his day, they say. <laughs> Maybe that's where the noise was coming from. Bad cam bearing. The only reason I have a glove on is because... He's Michael Jackson, see? No, no, he no. only has one glove on. This tool was in my trunk, <laughs> so it's freezing cold. Right. Now. right. I don't usually wear it. All right, Clayton Jackson. Just hold him over. 
All right. Anyways, you get the idea. We'll take out the last one. All right. So it's the next day now. Um, after we knocked out the cam bearings, um, if you guys saw, we did a live stream for a little while. So obviously, I never filmed any of that. And then uh, we just hung out and had some drinks. So we didn't really get anything else done. So the five threes over there. Uh, cam bearings are knocked out. Next thing we're gonna do with that is order ring bearings and cam bearings for it and then we'll uh, get the short block put back together. Uh, the truck, um, I just, I put the front end back on and stuff, I was test fitting things and uh, as you can see, I'm not really working on it today, just taking the day off. And Clayton said I should uh, update you guys on the total of uh, what I've been spending, so, so far, the complete engine, harness, ECM, uh, starter, alternator, all that kind of stuff was 305. And I, I bought the engine from a guy that was $200 for the engine. So it's not like I got it from the junkyard, but all the miscellaneous stuff I did get from the junkyard, like the computer and stuff. Uh, the turbo, the 7875 from VS Racing, the wastegate intercooler, tubing for the intercooler. Um, that was 1100 and uh, this is all in Canadian funds, so you'd have to figure out an American, obviously. The blow-off valve, the regulator, filter, the turbo blanket, uh, the silicones, dash six braided fuel line was 195, that was like AliExpress stuff. Uh, the V-bands, fuel fittings, O2 sensor bungs, converter adapter, um, the hot side piping, the, the exhaust tube, the one three and a half inch piece that I bought and stuff. That was 350, and then uh, the booster, the shaft, the fan, the hoses, of which was all stuff from the junkyard. That was like 85 bucks, and then the radiator was 225. That was from eBay. So as of right now, my total is 2260 bucks. So like I said, that's in Canadian funds. So I mean, take off about 30 percent of that, and that's what it would be in uh, in American. If you guys are from America, of course. Uh, here's the braided line that I got from AliExpress. It's like 10 feet of dash six for the return line. It was like $27 or something like that, super cheap. Uh, for, the, for the feed line, I'm running dash eight and I have leftover braided line pieces from my Nova when I switch it up to dash 10. So I'm using a bunch of that in fittings and stuff, so I'm reusing, so I'm not spending any money on that stuff, but I mean, I could put it in the total, add a value to it type of thing. Um, I ordered the cam, it's the Elgin uh, Sloppy Stage 2, everybody calls it, 585 lift. I ordered that off eBay. So that's on its way, that's coming. Um, I also ordered a TurboGuard filter screen, that's coming because I don't really have room for a filter. I think the screen will be fine. That's what I have on my car. Those TurboGuard uh, screens work really good to keep the big pieces out and I won't stop the dust, but that's okay. Um, and then I still got to order the valve springs uh, and then a few other small things. I got to order um, injector adapters because I want to run the older style injectors because I have a whole ton of them, but they don't fit in this fuel rail. They're too short. So you get these adapters, they're like 30 bucks. I'm sure you know if you've done one of these before, but they're like $30 and that, that you can use that for adapting those short injectors to like a LS, LS6 or LS1 intake manifold and also for these truck manifolds. So I got, I got to order that and uh, I got to order another U-bend uh, of three and a half for the exhaust. I might order a V-band and then V-band it down by the transmission so yeah so that's it for today i'll probably be out here tomorrow working on it again so uh until then uh like comment subscribe share with your friends if you're new check out all the other videos there's a lot of cool stuff on there and uh check you later